Hi there, this is a video looking at my uh, revived and upgraded Xbox 360. Uh, this is originally from 2007. It red ringed, it got the three flashing red lights called the Red Ring of Death. You all know about it uh, about two years ago. And I put it on a shelf because my roommates had an Xbox and um, I didn't look at it since, but just moved into my own place so I decided to fix it so um, long story short there the reason for red ringing in case you're not familiar is that the thermal management of this system it's basically just a small desktop computer is atrocious uh, the it was not very well thought out at all and it was uh, <laughs> implemented poorly um, so basically the heat can't be taken out of the um, the processor, the, the central processor, and the graphics processor, along with a bunch of smaller components as well, which are hot, which have absolutely no consideration for how hot they get. Um, like there's no heat sinking, there's no airflow over them, etc. So basically, everything gets too hot um, because the stock system can't dissipate the heat effectively. Everything cooks, and uh, eventually the the actual connections between some of the important components on these boards, um, specifically the CPU and the GPU, to the rest of the motherboard, they actually get so hot that they wear out. They fatigue off. Um, not entirely sure what happens, but basically things come disconnected because they've been so hot for so long. They just get cooked. So... Um, the pretty the pretty simple fix that a lot of people do if they only get two red flashing lights is uh, they take off both of the heat sinks. So there's this is the CPU heat sink. It is pretty tall. It's about it's about that tall. Um, and then there's the GPU heat sink, which I will show you here. It is underneath the So this is the GPU heatsink. It's pretty flat. Um, it's underneath the hard drive, and this is the CPU heatsink. It's much taller, but um, it's exposed to more ambient air. Um, how the heat gets out, or how it's supposed to work, is that this duct. There are two fans in the back here, and this duct pulls air um, through both of both of these heat sinks, or at least it's supposed to, um, and then shoots it out the back. Let me just pop this off really quick. Just got this little plastic tab. There you go. So, here you go. These are your two stock fans. They're just two 12 volt PC fans, essentially. But um, the problem with, with sucking only, like only exhaust and no input fans, um, I know this from building a couple of desktop PCs, is that uh, you, you don't always get the air flowing over the parts that you think you, you have. So the uh, this fan, or these fans, pull through this duct, but the duct is not completely sealed, so air seeps in around the sides and through the top and, you know, next to the heat sinks, not necessarily through the heat sinks. So that compounds the problem, and... Uh, everything gets too hot. So, um, some people take these off and then they uh, put new thermal paste between the components and the heat sinks. Um, that that fix it for some people. Um, what I had to do, let me pull this. Um, this is the DVD drive. So what I had to do was I actually unscrewed these two completely. Um, and I had to modify the chassis. So to get them to clamp better, I had to drill drill these holes out, um, which which is where the stock system has these. These were the original heat sink clamps. They were they were between this and the motherboard, so they were inside there. But they're just kind of this thin, springy steel. And that, those, those are really the only thing that was holding 
the heat sinks down to the motherboard and they're really flimsy like you can see I can just bend the crap out of these in my hands just like they're just they're just not very strong so these these were insufficient so what I did is I drilled them out and I'll put a link to this uh, to the method I followed in the description it was just uh, just on an instructables site so I drilled those out I put a stack of washers between uh, between the chassis and the bottom of the motherboard because there is a gap um, put some M5 screws through it and then put more fasteners on top of the motherboard and then screwed it into the heatsink so I actually have uh, an actual sandwich so it is uh, it's chassis washers motherboard washers heat sinks so you can clamp it and if you get the stack up right it doesn't flex the, uh, the motherboard it's super solid and uh, you could tighten those basically as tight as you want and you you won't break the motherboard and you can get incredibly tight uh, pressure between the heat sinks and the GPU and the CPU so you actually get that thermal transfer that has never <laughs> never existed on this on this computer um, so that's what I did that actually did not fix my problem though so I had the three lights the three red rings um, you look on the front I had one two three which is internal component failure some people just get two I'm not sure which two and they can fix it just by doing what I did with the extra heat sink pressure that usually only happens after you turn it on it sits there for a second it buzzes or maybe you know you play for five or ten minutes and then it gets too hot and then you get the two lights but with mine it was like you'd boot it up and um, before you could even start playing before you even get to the Xbox home screen it would give you the three lights which meant that there was an internal failure somewhere so what I had to do after I had tried that, reassembled it all with the washer stack, which is kind of a pain in the ass to actually assemble. But um, so I had to take all that off, take out the motherboard, and then I used a uh, <laughs> relatively sketchy feeling, but apparently effective um, method using a heat gun. This is a Wagner thousand watt, um, thousand watt, thousand C. I think it was both, maybe. Anyway, it's just your standard, standard medium to high powered heat gun. I got this on Amazon, 20 bucks. It's got a low, and it's got a high setting. So I had to use this thing to basically re-solder the board's internal connections with heat. So you have to take everything off. You take the fans off. You take the heat sinks off. You take the, the motherboard out of the chassis. You heat up the back of it on low, and you just move it around for a few minutes. And then you flip it over, and then on this side, you actually uh, you blast on high for four minutes straight. The CPU, the GPU, uh, this chip, that chip, the RAM here, and the, the chipset. So there's two, four, six, uh, seven. So there's actually seven chips that have potential for internal damage and you blast you just keep moving it so it's on high and that thing gets really hot like you you feel like you're starting to melt it but you set a timer on your phone you stick to the four minutes you just keep it moving try to be as even as you can don't hold it in one spot for too long let it cool down I let it cool down for 10 or 15 minutes um, reassembled it with my new heatsink clamp and hit the button on the front and boom it was a green light and it never turned red so um, if you have three lights like I did uh, you probably have to do that method some people do it in the oven which they might like better because you have more control technically over the temperature but uh, the average temperature in an oven is not the same as what you tell it so it might if you have it on the top rack it could be really hot um, I don't know that I feel like I could I could get a little better feeling for if something's starting to smoke or melt. I could see it immediately by using a heat gun instead of putting it in an oven. So anyway, I used the heat gun method, and it worked. Um, I've taken this thing apart and put it back together two or three times since it originally green ringed or green lighted me, and it has always worked. The only time it didn't work is when I had a heat sink off and I turned it on, and it gives you a red ring 
because they're the heat the heat transfer is non-existent so the CPU heats up way too fast and it red rings so don't ever turn it on without the heat sinks mounted but with the heat sinks mounted you don't even need the fans on you could turn it on if you got a green light um, it's fine just don't you know don't play games for hours with without the fans on but just to test it you can do it so I put it all back together um, and then after I put it together I decided that uh, I wanted to add I wanted to, I wanted to future proof this thing so um, I got to work as is the problem is the only thing I had improved was the thermal transfer into the heat sinks but the ducting these two fans this you know janky plastic thing with doesn't really seal on the heat sinks I don't know I, I didn't want to trust it for another few years you know so um, I decided to upgrade this thing because it really is an awesome system just a it's basically a computer you leave in your living room you know you can stream Netflix you can you can play play your old games like tons of old cool co-op games so I I think it's just great to have one that have one sitting around um, so let's go through the list of things that I upgraded um, after I did the heat sinks and this is probably overkill um, there's another link I'll put in the description to a DIY website where they sell a kit uh, it's a heat sink kit. They, it comes with uh, screws. The way that they do it, though, so I have this. Um, I have these heat sinks actually bolted to the chassis with washers between the motherboard and the chassis. How this website does it is they don't do that. They just bolt the heat sinks to the motherboard. So they have shorter screws, just one washer stack. It's probably the same thing, but they actually include uh, two little. Uh, stick on heat sinks um, these are these are not them these are ones that I've added from just when I got off of Amazon but that was the first time I saw anybody else adding heat sinks um, to this thing that were not just the big heat sinks alright so what I did I saw that I had already done the badass bolt on um, heat sinks and I wanted more so I said what what more can I do um, so I bought a little pack of like eight heat sinks on, on Amazon, came in this little tin, I think I have, I don't know, maybe three, three or four left that I, that I didn't use. Um, so I stuck one on everything. So I turned this thing on with the, with the two new heat sinks bolted on and, uh, I played, I just played a game for like five minutes and just started poking stuff with my finger. Um, you're resistive, you won't short anything with your finger, and I was just poking chips to see what got hot. And these two guys got pretty warm. This one actually has a little circle, a little silver circle on it that says Xbox. This one, I'm not sure what that is. This is RAM. This is just a RAM chip here, and that got pretty hot. And then this is the actual chipset. So if you've ever built a computer or looked at a computer motherboard, uh, it has it has a CPU, it has a bunch of other stuff. It's got RAM, which are these big sticks, but it's also got a chipset. And these uh, typically also have their own thermal management, at least something um, in a, in a tower. And right now they're just in the worst spot uh, on this thing. So this this gets really hot. This is a heat pipe, which actually takes some of the heat from the GPU and routes it to this little arm because this is covered completely by the DVD drive so it routes it to this little arm with the hopes I guess that it'll do some more cooling over here even though there's stagnant air there's no way the air pulling through this is pulling sideways through like that half an inch thick thing it's it's silly anyway so the chipset was getting hot too which are these two little chips I actually had to kind of put those two heat sinks at a, at a kind of in the corner so this one I just had to miss the heat pipe but that one I wanted to get it actually in the in the stream of air that's getting sucked through here uh, theoretically so um, I also didn't have one that was quite big enough to cover that after the other heat sinks I put on so I put these tall ones on you can see they're um, focus. they're actually in in their fins are in the air stream that goes through this heatsink. So in theory, if there is air flowing through the GPU heatsink, which I kind of doubt, 
then these little guys will get something. But if any, if nothing else, they just have uh, a greater surface area, which is the other point of heat sinks to dissipate to the surrounding. So I put on uh, five little heat sinks. None of these guys got hot. These are transistors and uh, logic circuits, and you know they're they're just switching and stuff like that. They don't really get hot. So. Um, anyway, so I put on five. I put on one, one, two big ones. These are both 15, 14 or 15 millimeters square. Um, this one is, I don't know, probably about a 12 by 18, and then these are probably about five, five millimeters square and kind of tall. So the point here was that I put this one in line with the airflow, so the air is being sucked this way. Uh, this guy is outside of the duct, so it, uh, it doesn't. I, I just gave it this like ambient air one that doesn't really have directional fins it just uh, it just kinda has a greater surface area so it has more pillars than fins um, so I'm I put it kind of sloped this way so if air does get sucked in from the side to go into the fans then you can see the fins are somewhat oriented that way like they're longer this way than that way but it doesn't really matter and this one again the ram I just fit it to the shape so there's probably no airflow across that so there you go. So I put five little heat sinks on it, um, and then I decided that I wanted to make this, make the heat sinks, the big heat sinks, actually do something. So I put on two PC fans here. So take a look. This is a little 40 millimeter 12 volt fan that I, <laughs> I actually scrounged, scrounged this from a an external. Uh, SATA hard drive. This is a hard drive. It's uh, an external enclosure. Focus, dang it. So this is an external enclosure. It actually had a little fan in it. I don't really know what it did. It just kind of blew it. Just kind of blew air on the back of the whatever. Um, regardless, it's a little 40 millimeter fan. 12 volts. It doesn't really run uh, at lower voltage though. So um, what I did was I wired a, um, I wired a switch in. So there's this fairly common 12 volt mod for these two, the two main fans, the two stock fans in the back, um, that are, they plug in the stock connection is right here, this little pin here, um, this little white connector right here it has four wires coming out of it just two grounds and two basically variable 12 volt lines I say 12 12 volts um, they never run at 12 volts in the stock system they're supposed to be controlled by the CPU and the GPU heat levels so in theory this is the GPU fan this is the CPU fan um, the ducting is joined but I don't know that I guess maybe this fan contributes more to this one than that more to that one even though it's a giant neutral space where they mix in the middle regardless um, they never run at 12 volts because if they did you would know this these these fans are loud at 12 volts um, so uh, this is where they both come out though there's uh, I'm not going to unplug that but let's see if we need to peek at it there's, there's basically three three ports um, which is two ground in the middle and then on the close side closer to us the red wire is for the CPU fan over here there's a brown wire in the back which is for the GPU fan but they're the same same voltage they're just technically allowed to be controlled separately um, so anyway the uh, pretty common 12 volt mod that people do with this thing is to just override that connection um, so skip Again, skip this, use the ground here, but skip the little uh, five volt connections that come out of there and wire these two fans directly to a 12 volt line somewhere on the motherboard. And uh, then they're just running at 12 volts all the time instead of uh, five to six, which is pretty typical, which basically is, is optimized for quiet, but not for heat uh, dissipation. So, yeah, so that's pretty calm mod, but I I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to commit to it. I didn't want to have loud fans all the time. 
if I didn't necessarily need them. So I thought I should get creative. So here's what I did.